3D Object Tool. You can use the 3D tools to rotate, pan, scale, or position 3D objects. Using these tools, you make changes in the object, but not in the camera position. Now, click on the 3D Rotate tool to rotate the 3D object towards any axis. You can click and rotate the cursor to rotate the object. If you wish to move in a particular straight direction, you can hold on the Shift key and perform. The 3D Roll tool will allow us to tilt the 3D object to the Z axis. Select the tool and click and roll the cursor. And you should see the object rolling in the Z axis. 3D Pan tool will let us move the object towards left, right, up or down. You can select the tool and click and drag the cursor towards the left or right. Here you see the object has been moved to the left and right. 3D Slide tool will move the model horizontally or up and down to move it closer or farther away in the document. Select the tool, click and drag the cursor in any direction. And as you move, you should see the object sliding away. The 3D Scale tool will drag the object to a larger or smaller size. Select the tool, click and scale the object to enlarge. If you hold the Alt key, you can scale the object in the Z axis. Then, if you wish to return back to the initial position, you can click on this house icon, Return to Initial Object Position, in the option bar. The following options are the Rotate, Roll, Drag, and so on. Using these 3D object tools, you've now learned how to control the position and size of a 3D object. 3D Camera Tool This is the 3D Camera Tool, and its shortcut is the letter N. It allows you to change the vantage point from which an object is viewed. When you click on the tool, you should see the following tools. 3D Orbit, 3D Row View, 3D Pan View, 3D Walk View, and 3D Zoom Tools. Select the 3D Orbit tool, and then click and drag the cursor on the document to rotate the camera position in the freeform method around the 3D object. You can hold on to the Shift key to drag the camera position in the upward or downwards directions. Then, select the Roll View tool, which helps you to tilt the camera to the left or right axis. Hold the camera and tilt up or down to roll it. 3D Pan View tool will let us move the object towards left, right, up or down. You can select the tool and click and drag the cursor towards the left or right. Here you see the camera position has been moved to the left and right. Walk View tool will allow you to move the camera closer or further away from the 3D object. Now you can select the tool, click and move the camera to view the position. 3D Zoom tool changes the focal length of the camera, which lets you zoom in or out for close-up or long shots of the object. Now you can select the tool. You can click and drag the cursor to zoom out the camera. Hence, using these tools, you'll be able to rotate, roll, move, and zoom the cameras much more easily. Undo, redo, and revert. Undo and redo. These are the essential commands for everybody who works in Photoshop, but also useful in any software, really. It helps you to recall the previous step using the Undo option. And then using the Redo option, you can recall the Undo step. Here you have an image. Now let's do some scribbling using the brush tool in it. Now go to the Edit menu and click on the Undo option. Now you get the previous step back by removing the final step. After undoing, when you want to get back the Undo action, again go to the Edit menu and select the Redo option. And just watch it. 
you'll get the undo action back by using this option. You can also use the step forward and backward options to get the previous and next steps in the document. It almost works similar to the undo and redo options. If you really want to see how it works, then go to the edit menu and select the step backward option. And just observe the changes happening in your image. Then again, go to the edit menu and select the step forward option. And I believe that you can see that these two work quite similarly. You can access the undo option in the shortcut keys also. By pressing the Ctrl and Z key on your keyboard, you can undo. And then pressing the Shift key along with Ctrl and Z, you can recall two or more steps back. Now, let's talk about the Revert option. This is a very special option where you can get or regain the original image back after doing several changes in it. This option might be very useful for a professional photographer who might experiment with their images. Here you have the same image and along with the scribbling which I've done in it. Now let's remove all those scribbles in just one command. For that, go to the file menu and select the revert option. Oh, it's like magic, isn't it? Everything has vanished in just one command. You can also access this option by using the F12 key on the keyboard as a shortcut. Hence, you can regain the changes or the original image by using the Undo, Redo or Revert options. Cut, Copy and Paste Using Cut, Copy and Paste options, you can remove as well as paste the objects in an image or in any document file. If you want to move the object to a new layer or a new document, you can use the Cut option. Here you have an object on the stage and you need to cut it. So, select the rectangular selection tool and draw a selection around the object. Now go to the edit menu and then select the cut option. You can paste this cut object in the new layer or you can paste it in the new document. Now go to the file menu and select new option. Now, in the new dialog box, you can select any of the preset options from here. And you can also change these parameters as you want. And then click on OK. After creating a new document, go to the Edit menu and select Paste option. And now the object has been pasted in this document. Now let's see how to copy an object. Here you will copy this object and create a duplicate of it in the same document. Using the rectangular selection tool, draw a selection around the object. Now go to the edit menu and then select copy option. Now the object has been copied and it's ready to create a duplicate of it. Go to the edit menu and select the paste option. Can you find the duplicated object in the document? I think you'll not be able to find it because it is created on top of the original object. In order to view it, select the Move tool from the toolbar and click on the object and drag the cursor. And now you'll be able to see the duplicated object. If you want to create plenty of duplicates of an object, then you can paste this copied object as many times as you'd like. To create duplicates of the copied object in a simple way, then use its shortcut keys. Just press the Ctrl and V keys simultaneously in the keyboard. Now you can also get the copies of the object in an easier way still by just pressing the Alt key and then click and drag on the object which you need to duplicate. You could repeat it as many times as you need. Then you have an option called Paste Into where well, the copied object will be pasted only into the selection area. Now let's take a look at it. Select the rectangular selection tool and draw a selection in the document. To paste the object into the selection, just go to the edit menu and select paste into option. Now I think this is fantastic. The object is placed inside the selection. In the edit menu, you can see the clear option under the paste into option which will remove the entire pasted object. If you have merged objects, then you can use the Copy Merged option. 
Thus, you can remove or create copies of an object using the Cut, Copy and Paste options. Fade, Fill and Stroke Let's learn first off about the Fade option. Now, I think the term Fade itself indicates its function to us. Yes, it reduces the transparency of the color or blending mode of any color adjustment, painting tools, erasing tools or filters in the Photoshop document. Now here you have a shape in this document and let's fill a color in it using the paint bucket tool. Select the tool and click on the shape to fill the color. Let's try the fade option in it. So go to the edit menu and then click on the fade option. Now you get the fade option dialog box where you can adjust the opacity slider by moving it to the left or right. As you click and move the slider towards the left, you should see the transparency increasing in the shape. Now you can also select any of the modes from the mode option. And if you want to know more about them, then you can view it in the blending modes. Finally, click on OK to apply the changes into the shape. Now let's try to apply the fill and stroke options to the selection. Fill and stroke options allow us to fill color and apply the borders for the selection or an object. Now delete this shape by pressing the delete key in the keyboard. Let us select the rectangular selection tool and draw a selection in the document. Now go to edit menu and select the fill option and immediately you'll get the fill dialog box. Under contents you have this use option and when you click on its option you can select the foreground color, background color, color or a pattern and so on. It helps us to fill the corresponding option which we have selected. Now here you can select the foreground color option then you can also specify the blending mode and opacity for the fill as you want. This preserve transparency option will help us fill certain pixels when you're working in the layers. After setting the options just click on OK and now the selection has been filled with the foreground color. The same process is involved for the Stroke option as well. Go to the Edit menu and select the Stroke option, and you get the Stroke dialog box. In that, specify a numeric value for the Width option. If you wish to change a color, just click on this Color option, choose a color, and then click OK. Using the Location option, you can set the border inside center or outside the selection and here you can select any one of these from the options. Then you can also set the blending mode and opacity option as you need. After specifying the values you can click on OK to apply the changes into the selection. Now the border is applied to the selection. Thus you can fill and apply borders to a selection or an object in Photoshop using the fill and stroke options.